Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're going to be attempting this gorgeous looking puzzle today called Sun, Moon or Star by the constructor Vol Volatility. Now this puzzle was another of these entries into last month's space themed competition over on our Discord server and it comes very, very highly recommended. Uh, but before we get cracking, I need to update you on some new um, bonus content for everybody. Um, first, we've got a Cracking the Cryptic themed Snake Sum Sudoku by Quarter Through. Now, Quarter Through has made a number of these uh, Snake Sum Sudokus. He's released them on Logic Masters Germany, and they have all got extremely high uh, approval ratings. Um, so we want to give this puzzle a bit of attention. So what we're going to do is release it as a community post uh, for you guys. So uh, do have a look at it. It is a lovely puzzle. Um, now, the other thing, um, the other puzzle that I want to release as a community post today uh, is a lovely puzzle called Cosmology, uh, which also has sort of evolved from our Discord server. It's incredibly highly rated. It's by um, Bobuardo da Vinci. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And initially, I have to confess, we were thinking of doing a video on the channel of that puzzle. Um, now, the reason we haven't done it is that two of the testers that I got to look at that both said that it's quite difficult to make the computer do the pencil marks that you want to make it do. And they suggested it, it might not work and therefore I was a bit reluctant to try it. So, But I really want to give the puzzle a chance to be solved. So as I say, it's going to be up there in a community post. Do have a go at it. I haven't tried that puzzle yet. Uh, so I can't I can't tell you any more than that. Now both of those puzzles, as I say, are going to be free on our community pages. But what I want to do there as well is to run a poll um, for our patrons on Patreon. So the the puzzle that gets the highest number of votes, we will do a bonus video on Patreon of how to solve it. So uh, yeah, get voting and let us know which you prefer to see us solve. Um, now let's get on to volatility's puzzle. This sounds extremely cool today. Let me read you the rules. What we've got to do, we have some star battle rules going on. So we need to place two stars in each row, column and region so that stars do not touch even diagonally. Stars may not be placed on squares with a moon or a sun on them. So you can see there are some crescent moons and some round suns. We can't put stars on those cells. Then, now this is where it gets interesting, right? Then we have to draw a closed loop in the grid, which passes through each region exactly once. The loop must pass through either all moon cells or all sun cells in any region. If the loop passes through moon cells in one region, then in the next region it enters, it has to pass through the sun cells and vice versa. The loop must pass through at least one moon or sun cell in each region and the loop may not pass through stars. So there's quite some rules there to get our heads around. But I, to be honest, as I read that, I, I sort of feel like I understand it. So hopefully, hopefully that will <laughs> permeate into my brain and I will be able to retain it and actually perform a solve for you guys. So with that, uh, do the way to play the puzzle. We're on Pemper today because we need to do loop drawing. Uh, Sven, our genius programmer, is busy working on all sorts of things for the software update for our web app and I hope that loop puzzles will eventually be possible there. Uh, but we're going to use Pemper today. The way to play, of course, click the link under the video and I will try and talk you through anything I do up here with these modes in order to allow myself to draw loops. So actually, I think loops and stars are under the composite thing. So if we go composite object star battle, yeah, you can enter stars in the grid and X's. If you go loop, I normally like line or OX there because I think, yeah, that's just dragging a loop. You can see we can drag some loops uh, as well. So that that's all under composite, but also we need to presumably label cells that can't be stars, etc. And I like to do that in color. So I'll probably use green for that, which is under surface. Select green. We are good to go. We're so that's it. Let's get cracking and see how we do. Um, let's get cracking. So there are. So I presume we start with star battle here, do we? So this plus shape region must be very constrained because I can't yeah, okay. So I can't put 
a star here and a star here because they would connect to each other diagonally. So wherever the stars go in the plus region, they are sort of at opposite ends of the plus sign. They're either in those two positions or they're in those th these two positions. So one of those two options must be true. Now, OK, so we can immediately rule out these these cells from containing stars because if they contain a star if we try and put a star here we would rule out both of these cells from being stars and now we have to put stars adjacent to one another or touching diagonally at the other side and we know that doesn't work so we have a little bit of a start oh I know what I can do though star I think it said that yeah, stars may not be placed on squares that have a moon or a sun in them. So we can actually, we can do some clicking around the grid and put green on every moon uh, and sun cell. So let's do that. Let's test my clicking. Ah, missed my headshot there. Do, do, do. Right, there we go. Okay, so we get this arrangement. And now... Often with these puzzles, it's a case of, you know, just finding the break in and then you can start to get some traction. So there are two, re three regions. I was about to say two regions that I think are interesting. There's the plus, which we've already looked at. There's this sort of crescent region. Now, the, re the reason that's interesting to me is that that only contains moons. Ah, uh, this, this region is definitely interesting. I'm going to come back to that. The other region that I thought might be interesting is this region. Now that only contains suns, and I can see a very approximately where the two stars go. Look, there's a two by two there. You can you can only put a star in a two by two region. So once there's one star allocated to this two by two region, you you can then see there's just enough space for another star in this 2x2 two two region to complete the two stars that must appear in this box. Now I want to come back actually to this region, this one with the crescent moons in it, because each region is, is visited once by the loop. Now that means that as this has no suns in it, this region, every single moon in this region is visited by the loop. So we can't sort of duck in here, duck out again, then come back in, pick up the loop like that, because this region has now been visited more than once by the loop. It, it's, it's, it's been visited once here, again here, uh, that's twice and that's too many. So once the loop enters the crescent this this region here, it's got to pick up all the loop ooh, it's got to pick up all the loop cells before it exits. Now that is very interesting, at least to me, because well that means that must be a loop segment. I don't know whether it goes to this region or to this region, but it simply has to go here because it cut it's got to come down and pick up its friends before it leaves. Similarly here, we can actually yeah, it's got to do those. It's got to do these. And then somehow it's got to pick up this one. Um, okay. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> um, what does it mean? Ah. It does mean something, but not for the crescent moon region. Yeah, it does mean it means something for the plus region. This is gorgeous. This is already gorgeous. Look, if I put stars vertically in the plus region, how do I put two stars into the crescent moon region now? I can't put any more stars in this column, whatever column this is. So I'd have to fit two stars into that shape. Now these quite clearly touch one another orthogonally and that is against the rules so actually in this plus region we now know the stars do that and that is going to allow us to ring them in green like this and we're off and running so yeah in fact we can draw some loop in here can't we because the loop has got to now go through the gate of the stars 
pick up the sun. Yeah, this uh, I already love this puzzle. I love this puzzle now because look, look at this line here. Look at this loop segment that's entering. It's coming down here. Now, one option for it would be to enter the crescent moon area here. But this breaks the puzzle because remember, I've now got to somehow get this loop to pick up this moon, this moon and this moon without exiting the region. It's got to pick up all three of those moons. It's impossible. You simply cannot do it. No matter how long I sit here for, I will not be able to draw a loop that picks up all of those. I, the best I can do is two of them. And then this one is stranded. So that does not work. You can never, this region can never drop down into this region. And that means it must enter that region. Which means this one, this top end of the loop, can't enter this region. Otherwise, we're going to close the loop too early. So that enters that region. And now, now this is a sun region. So we, yeah, this is, this is again, it's beautiful. The way this region works, the way volatility has constructed the, the moons in this region is gorgeous. Because this is a sun region and we've entered a region that must be moon. So this moon needs to get collected by the loop, which means that we have to come up here, pick this cell up and then come out again like this. And we mustn't visit the, the sun. So we must then go like, oops, we mustn't, must go like that. So this can't duck down first. This has to go straight across. And we can't close this because we wouldn't have re hit the moon. So that must go up, hit this. And now I've got to put two stars in this region. How can I do that? If I, if I put two stars here, these touch each other. That's not right, clearly. So that must be a star. That gives me two stars in this column. So this must be a star. And there we go. We're done on this region. That's all of these turn green. And we're going to get the rest of the loop. Ah, oh, it's just beautiful, isn't it? So that hits that. This has to come. Oh, I don't know why it's doing that. This has to come along here. It's got to pick up this. And now look, it can't turn left because there's a moon and it's got to visit in the next region it visits, it's got to find a sun. So it's got to come down. It's got to take this sun. It mustn't hit these moons now. So it's got to go through that gap. And we can put in some more greens around 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 the, sun, the star. So those two change. And OK, now we reach a hiatus. Actually, look, I tell you what I should do as I should label this columns um, white cells as green because I can't put any more stars in here and I should do the same in this row and see if that reveals any secrets to me. And it does it. I'm not sure that it does actually. Um, Ah, so I've noticed something. I've noticed something. If we look at the crescent moon shape region, I can divide this approximately into two by two blocks. Look, I can, um, this region here can take exactly one star and this little sort of sideways domino here could take a maximum of one star. So actually I should use a different color. I will use yellow. So now if we look in this row, and this row and count the number of possible stars. I've got one, one in the yellow, that's two, one in the red, three, one in this blue, four. That's exactly how many stars there must be in this region, in those two rows, four stars. So those all turn green. Um, now, what do we do next? Ah, I've just spotted something else. Look, the loop up here 
is coming from a sun region, so it can't hit the sun. It's got to go around the sun, and it's going to... So now this region's determined for its stars, because... Well, it's not quite determined, but it's certainly almost determined, because now... How do I put enough stars into this region where the loop is here? I've got to put two stars in. So I, I have to put a star here. And that means I have to put a star here. And now I can green out the remainder like this. And happy days, we can draw the loop. Keep having to switch between modes, but I don't mind when a puzzle is this beautiful. So, hmm. Okay, I don't, yeah, I've got more, more, I've got all my stars in row one. We can do a little bit of tidying up look in the, in the top left hand region. You can see the dominoes where the, the two stars have to be now. We know that they're in those two dominoes. I don't know. Oh, I, I do know this row, row four, I've not put any stars into it yet. I've got to put two stars into it so we can see where they're going to have to go. If they don't touch, they have to be in those positions, which is going to allow us to do more colouring. This is a very pretty puzzle, both in terms of um, sort of its initial look with this sort of sun in the middle with a sort of shading on the right hand side, but also because of my colouring. I think that really makes it. Um, Okay, so actually that wasn't quite as good, but we got a domino here that must contain a star, so we can't put a star here anymore. That will create an impossible, it would then be impossible to put a star in the blue region. I've got two stars in column four, so all of this becomes green. That's located, look, the star in the blue region now. It must be here. So let's go back to labeling greens again. We can do this, this, this creates a domino here. So this now can't be a star and we get the star in this square. So let me put that in, see if that reveals any secrets to us. It does a little bit. Yeah, that, that fixes some loop now. So we're back to loop because the, this one has to come down. It has to pick this up. And we get, well, so we get two more green sections in here. That's green, that's green. Um, uh, sorry, um, now I have to think again. <laughs> uh, hopefully the thinking won't take too long. Yeah, okay, I've got two stars in this row. Sorry, I should have seen that immediately. So this must be the second star. Let's put that in. Do we, yeah, ah, now look. This top top middle region is a moon region. This is a moon region. So the moon region, we can't allow the loop to come into this region because it needs to be a sun region. If, it's, if this one was a moon region, it needs to move into a sun region. This is definitely a moon region because this was a sun region. So this must exit. It must exit here. And now... This one, on the other hand, oh, this is gorgeous. This is a gorgeous little idea. Again, let's think about how this loop segment develops. Now, it's got two choices in terms of how it fixes, how it, how it moves through this sun region. It could just come in and then turn, or, or well, you can see it can't come into another sun region here. So it could drop in and turn left. That's one option. Or it could turn this way. And now to pick up this sun, it has to drop down and come this way. And now you can see it's it's blocked off. It can't come into another sun region. So it would have it, it's got nowhere to go. In other words, this cannot go this route. This must oh dear, lots of pencil marks I didn't mean to do. Get rid of those somehow. So it must drop down, it must turn left. Now it's got to come through this gate because it's got to escape into a moon region, so it can't come through here and make this region a sun region. This puzzle is gorgeous. Every step is sort of logically deducible, it's, it's, and it feels a very linear solving path, which is beautiful. And now this loop segment can't drop down, because if it does, it has to pick up this sun region as well. We've got to pick up all the sun regions, and then there's nowhere for the loop to escape to. So it's got to go there, drop down, now this, 
Now this one needs a moon region next and this one also needs a moon region next so it's possible this and this do connect. Although that's a bit awkward because we've got to pick up that moon. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm just trying to understand if what else I should be picking up there. The answer is okay. Maybe I'm a bit stuck again now. come back over here and see if we can do any tidying up with stars perhaps have we got any situations where we we have oh no I was about to say something that would have been nonsense so I won't say it um, hmm okay so this region I need to put two stars in it And I've still actually got quite a few options as to where those stars can be. So what is it that's meant to tell me what's what here? So this, this region is a sun region. So there's a few things here that I'm noticing actually. I'm going to firstly though do some shading. If we look at the bottom right box you can see there's two little triominoes if you like that are going to have to contain a star. We're going to have to put one star in there and one star in here. Now how are we going to now get four stars into the first two uh, the last two columns of the grid we've got one here and we've got one in the red region that's two so there must be two more stars contributed by this region in other words this square can't be a star because that would take away one of the stars we need in uh, these two final columns now we now know we can do some more highlighting there must be one star there and this is actually a star so that's nice so we get a star here that helps us develop the loop of course it would do with volatility's puzzle everything is beautifully structured and now yeah now if we study these two columns i've got one two three four stars so this square can't be that square there can't be a star otherwise we'd have five stars in those columns and anything else there might be more things I'm trying to spot them yeah let's look at this region where are the stars going in this region again we can do some very simple dividing up into two by two blocks there can be a maximum of one star in this region and a maximum of one star in this region and you can see that once we identify a domino this domino is really powerful it allows us to remove this square from being a star and remove this square from being a star which allows us to place another star look in this region which we can immediately then tidy up the the loop as well so I'm going to do that this loop's got to come down pick up this square We've now got two stars in this row. You can see immediately that's going to tidy up these dominoes and allow us to enter in more stars, which is what we're trying to do. So those become stars. That gives us two stars in this column and this column. Perfect. So we get more stuff done. Those two turn green. These turn green. And yeah, we, could, we should keep going here. I'm going to keep going with highlighting. There must be one star here. There must be one star here. Just because this region needs two stars. So let's green around the edge. We've got our two stars identified in this column now. That must be green. Um, one, ah, no, I'm not sure about that one. Okay. All right, well, that was a good... 
a good flurry of activity regarding the stars, but it seems to have come to a halt. So the next thing I want to look at actually is this region at the bottom and how it gets visited by the loop because it has to be, obviously it's got to be visited by the loop. And I'm just wondering, this is definitely a moon region. So this needs to visit a sun region next. And this is a sun region, so this needs to visit a moon region next. And it's got to visit this square. So the exit of the loop from this region, you can see it's either got to be this way or, or downwards into this region. If it goes left, it can only get out one way. It's got to go that way. And that's going to be... No, that's impossible. That is impossible. Look at the way that volatility has structured this box. Because if this exits this way, how do we get the loop to visit the bottom right hand corner of the grid and get out again? You can see it's possible. Uh, well, it's not. It's just totally not possible. Actually, I say it's possible. It's absolutely impossible because this would have to come up here. Well, <laughs> and it. it <laughs> Sorry, I'm not being very articulate. It's got to pick up this moon region here. It's then got to somehow turn back on itself and come in here. This this has to be a sun region. And it's got to pick up this sun and get out again, which it can't do because it can't touch the moons. So however it comes in here and picks up the sun, it now can't turn back. It's just It just can't get out. I mean, there's a variety of reasons this loop can't enter this region because... The other reason, of course, is the only way it can sort of it can ever enter this region is if it immediately turns around and comes in and then it hasn't picked up the, the, the moon here. The moment it tries to pick up the moon from this region, the next region it will have to visit is this region and then it can't get in here anyway because it's going to be isolated. So for a whole plethora of reasons, I don't think this sun exits left. So we now know that the loop exits downwards into a moon region. And this is perfect because now, how does it exit downwards? Can it just drop down like this? The answer is no, because it now needs to pick up its friend. It's got to come this way, pick this up. And now the only way it gets out is reversing back and going back into the same region, which is illegal. You can't go into the same region twice. So this actually can't drop down it has to come across ah, and you can see exactly how this is going to move now it's got to do this that only leaves one space left for the second star in this region this is brilliant 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 setting and that means the loop does that and we can put in some more greens here and here because this is a star this is now obviously impossible to be a star because there's two stars in this column that means this is a star and okay i don't know we've still got to put one star in this blue region look now it feels to me like that means the question that we have to ask is does this loop next enter this region or does it enter the bottom region? So let's try and work that out. So if it enters the top region, that's going to have to be a sun region. Um, Now that might be possible. I'm just trying to work this out. So the sun 
this region here needs to visit a sun region as well so it could loop round like this oh no that doesn't work actually that's interesting y yeah this region if this does come oh hang on let me go to loop to show you if this region if we come in here this now has to be a sun region so we're going to have to pick up this square and then the question is how do we exit this region and the key I think is that we've not yet visited the region in the bottom left so the next region we visit is going to have to be this region and this region if this is a sun region will have to be a moon region and that's impossible gorgeous because if yeah this is absolutely beautiful so so let's think this through very logically sorry and I know I'm sort of doing this um, at zero miles an hour but I'm having to think about it on the fly and explain it so if we come into this region here where the cursor is we know that this is coming from a moon region so that makes this a sun region now the problem we've got now is we've never visited the bottom left of the grid and we have to and this bottom left region only sees two other two other regions now because it's there's no connection here in other words this region has to be visited both by this region and this region's loop segments so we have to move from this region here down somehow into this region which makes this region a moon region and then we have to exit this moon region into this region but this region therefore needs to be a sun region but it can't be because we've already determined because of the top loop here that this needs to be a moon region that is illogical well it's not it's just not right which means this does not exit through the top here it exits down it ex this is a loop segment and this is a sun region so the loop's got to come all the way along there now ah ah and now now we've got to put a second star into this column where does it go okay we're happy days i think we're on the right track that's the only position for a second star in this column we can green out the rest of this the loop can be extended down here actually look this star is seeing that square so i could have done that before I don't think it matters to the logic we were just looking at but this must be a star that means those two are ruled out I need to put two stars in this region so we're going to get a couple more stars off the back of this we get a star here and a star here now there must be a second star look in this region in this column in this domino so once we label this up as star a star in this domino we've done the two stars for this column and that's going to give us more more joy we can rule out those two we can place a star up here getting quite proficient at flicking between these various options i know it's a bit frustrating that must be the second star in that region oh we're going to get left with a sort of uniqueness thing that must be resolved by the loop presumably so let's color in the rest here and make us make it seem like we're doing good work okay so this is where we this is with this is where we reach and now let's extend the loop and see where it takes us so we've got to come up here we're going to visit the Sun okay so the next thing I've just noticed is into which region does the loop now move from here if it moves up that's okay as far as parity is concerned because this is a moon region and that's what we need but these two loop segments will now have to connect somehow it doesn't matter how they do it but they have to connect and now what I've drawn is a big ring around the grid and in the middle here I've got another partial ring and that's going to create two closed loops not one so this tells us rather beautifully that the correct way that uh, this loop 
moves is not into this region. Well, the only other region it can move into, therefore, is the right-hand region. And this, I think, is going to help us determine which way round these stars go. So we now know this region. This, this region where the cursor is now is a moon region. Ah, yeah, yeah, yes, it's beautiful again. Look at this. Look at this. If we draw the stars in that direct, that those two positions there, and you can see we either have to draw them like this, that's one option, or like that. That's the two ways we can draw the stars, because we mustn't have more than two stars in this row and this row. So it's like an X-wing pattern in Sudoku. Well, if I draw them like this, what happens as the loop comes in here? It gets shoved into a cul-de-sac because however it comes out here, it comes in here. This is a moon region, so it's got to pick this moon up. And now, look, it gets shoved into this square. It can't go up into a sun. It can't go right into a star, which is not what the idea of the puzzle is. So we enter, we can go back to star battle logic, remove these stars. These are the two stars. Let's colour it all in appropriately, like so, so we're consistent. Remove the X's, so we're consistent. And now we can continue with the loop. So let's do it. Boom, boom. We've got to pick up the moon. Boom. We can't go into a cul-de-sac. We must go up. We've got to go through the gate. So this is a moon. So this, oh, Okay, so this is a sun region now, and there's a sun here. So we're going to have to go through there and down. That's the only way we can get to the sun. So that connects this all up, which means that... Ah, I can see how this is going to finish. So we're in a sun region with this loop end. We're going to have to come into this region, but we've got to pick up this moon that's right in the corner of it. So that's forced. This must come up. This must come up. This must come up. We mustn't close the loop. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, there. And that is how to solve one of the most gorgeous logic problems you'll ever see. No individual step is terribly difficult, but the solve is just so satisfying because the logic is so tight, linear, gorgeous. Loved it. Volatility, thank you very much for creating that. That gave me a great deal of pleasure. I hope you guys got as much out of it as I did. And yeah, Mark will be back later with, I think, a difficult Sudoku puzzle this evening. So check that out.